Hi and welcome to my class on purse seam fishing. I'm Madeline Nee and I'm your teacher. Today we will be reviewing everything we went over last class about purse seam fishing. So does anybody have any questions? Yes. Could you go over how it is done again? Of course I can. So remember, purse seam fishing is a large wall of netting that is deployed around an entire spool or area of fish. Remember that the scene has a top edge and at the top edge, it has floats that keep it above the water. And at the bottom edge, it has weights that keep the net pulled downward. At the bottom of the net, it has a wire threaded through it that when pulls and tightens, the net, like a purse, traps the fish inside, preventing the fish from escaping and swimming downward. So once the school of fish is entrapped inside the net, the way that they get it on board is either by lifting it or pumping it into the boat. Excuse me, teacher. Yes? How exactly do these people find these schools of fish? Well, actually, um, finding these schools of fish is one of the most difficult parts of purse seam fishing. There are many techniques to doing this, including looking for natural clues, such as seabirds flying above, a whole bunch of seabirds flying above a certain area of the water, or if there's ruffling of surfaces of the water, so that's when you know there's a whole bunch of fish in that area and also when there's a group of dolphins swimming. Also, for bigger corporations and companies that use person fishing, one way that they do this is by having helicopters look down at the water and look for these natural cues to see and then tell the people on the boats where to go and throw the nets. Another way that these people scan for fish is by using radar fish finders, which help them identify the exact um, the exact size of the school of fish, how to identify what type of fish it is, and the exact location where the fish is swimming. Wow, that's so cool, right? Teacher? Yes? Can you go over the pros and cons of purse fishing? Of course I can. So like many other types of fishing, purse fishing has pros and cons. One of the pros is that it is very consistent and it's an efficient way to fish. Another pro is that it is one of the most environmentally friendly types of fishing since it has no contact with the seabed or ocean floor and because of this it doesn't destroy or damage corals it also doesn't rake our seabed and that creates damage so another pro is that it's an excellent method for catching schools of fish as i said before and also it has low levels of bycatch bycatch is when we accidentally catch in our nets unwanted fish and we accidentally bring them on onto our boat Wow, that's so interesting. Yes, that is very interesting. Now, some person fishing cons is that person fishing is a non-selective type of fishing. Yes, person does target certain species and um, type of fish in schools in the water. However, you cannot ensure that other fish won't get captured into the net. Um, some animals, marine animals that get entangled into the nets are protected or endangered. For example, the sea turtle. The sea turtle can get entangled into the nets and because of this, they can be injured. Um, their flippers can be injured or their shell or sometimes they can even die. Which is a huge con to cursing fishing is that animals get trapped in these nets and become injured. And their population is hurt because of this. Um, that is also called bycatch. Even though it is low, it still happens. Um, another con is that this method cannot be reliable for catching deep water fishes. Because, as I said in the pros, it does not touch the bottom of the, of the seabed. So, does anybody have any more questions about purse fishing? No, that was a great review. Thank you. The reason I took my presentation in this direction, um, in the form of a classroom with a teacher and a student, is because I feel it's most relatable, that relationship is most relatable to people. Also, by using my sister as a student and having her interject questions and certain things throughout the video, um, I felt that that helped prolong my review of the topic. Um, also, when she was saying like, wow, this is so interesting and that's so cool, that also helped portray the fact that kids nowadays should be more interested in their environments, wanting to learn and learn about their environment and certain things they can do. My presentation was also mostly upbeat and positive because that was meant to portray how purse fishing is one of the most economically friendly types of commercial fishing. So that's why my presentation was all um, bright, 
However, when I was listing the cons of perseen fishing, I made it black and white to show the difference between pros and cons and to really emphasize that for the viewers and like people who are watching the video that now this is the negative part of perseen fishing. And for how I did it, what I did was I screen shared my presentation from the app Google Doc, Google Slides on my phone. I screen shared it to the TV in my house. And then I had my sister record me from behind the desk and for my parts. And then for her parts, she was acting as a student and I would record her. So we would switch back and forth. In preparation for videotaping, I wrote out my scripts and I wrote it out by hand and that helped me remember what I was saying and then I practiced it to help get rid of certain stutters that I would have um, to decrease the amount of stutters I would have in my presentation. Also for making my presentation, I used Google Slides and I was able to have a certain type, a certain theme of presentation, um, a more decorated type and one that best suits my topic because I used a website called Slides Go which helped me pick a more decorated type of presentation which really put emphasis on my topic that I was talking about marine life and then I edited it of course on iMovie and I added transitions and I was able to um, like snip out certain parts of my video that I didn't want also um, at the end I had to upload my video to YouTube and that was pretty easy since I already had an account that was connected to my Gmail and having my YouTube video uploaded, having the video uploaded to YouTube, I was able to get that link and use a website. Through a website, I was able to put that link into a QR code. And I then got my QR code and I copied it and I put it on the last slide of my presentation. And then of course, at the end, I made sure that my QR code worked properly and was connected to the link to my YouTube video. So thank you, that concludes my presentation and my how to do it part of the video. Thank you.